Burkina Faso's president, Ibrahim Traoré, has a plan that could lead to the collapse of European companies and the removal of European leaders from power. While it may seem unbelievable, since he is just taking office, note that he has gained the authority to overthrow these leaders. In a reversal of previous events where European leaders would overthrow African leaders, Ibrahim Traoré, upon becoming the president of Burkina Faso, embarked on a secret mission. He kept his plan hidden until everything was prepared and there was no opposition to its execution. However, one thing was clear. This plan was aimed at improving the well-being and advantages of the people of Burkina Faso. Consequently, European companies suffered losses because their profits were solely dependent on keeping the people of Burkina Faso deprived. After ruling for one year, Ibrahim Traoré has finally revealed his plan, causing European leaders to hastily make emergency visits in an attempt to counter him. However, it may be too late, as Ibrahim Traoré is already on the verge of implementing his grand and master plan. So, what exactly is this transformative plan, and how can it have a profound impact on Europe? Let's dive into the details in this video. Currently, all the gold mining companies operating in Burkina Faso are foreknown. Some belong to European nations, while others are Canadian. Surprisingly, there isn't a single gold mining company representing Burkina Faso's interests. In essence, these foreign companies have been exploiting Burkina Faso's gold reserves without any restrictions, leaving the local population with no benefits. This unfortunate situation has persisted for centuries, tracing its origins back to the time when France held control over Burkina Faso. Even though gold mining companies may not have existed during that era, France took advantage of other natural resources. Therefore, what we witness today in Burkina Faso can be attributed to the lasting effects of colonialism, particularly the European scramble for Africa in the early 1890s, during which various European military officers sought to claim territories that now constitute Burkina Faso. During the era of colonialism, there were instances where colonial figures clashed with local populations, while in other cases, they formed alliances and treaties with them. France emerged as the foremost colonial power to invade the territory that we now recognize as Burkina Faso, eventually establishing it as a French protectorate in 1896. In 1897, the eastern and western regions encountered resistance from the influential ruler Samurai Touré, leading to their occupation by the French. By 1898, a significant portion of what is now Burkina Faso had seemingly come under French control, although their authority remained uncertain in certain areas. The Franco-British Convention on the 14th of June 1898 laid the groundwork for the modern borders of the country. Over the next five years, there was an ongoing struggle for dominance over local communities and political powers. In 1904, the relatively pacified regions of the Volta Basin were incorporated into the Upper Senegal and Niger colony of French West Africa, with Bamako serving as its capital. French became the language utilized for colonial administration and education. While the public education system had modest beginnings, advanced education was made available for several years during the colonial period in Dakar. Behind the scenes, France had already begun exploiting the resources of Burkina Faso. It is important to understand this historical context to grasp the underlying factors contributing to the present situation in Burkina Faso. The legacy of colonization has had a profound impact on the country, shaping its borders, language, and the dynamics between local communities and foreign powers. During their rule in Burkina Faso, France extensively utilized the natural resources of the country, employing various strategies to amass wealth and establish economic dominance. One of their primary focuses was on harnessing the potential of Burkina Faso's agricultural sector, particularly through the cultivation of cotton, which emerged as a significant cash crop during the colonial era. To maximize cotton production, French authorities implemented coercive measures that often disadvantaged local communities, ensuring that the agricultural wealth flowed primarily to benefit the French economy. Moreover, the colonial regime took advantage of Burkina Faso's rich mineral resources, including valuable commodities such as gold and other minerals. 
It is evident that France had a keen interest in exploiting these minerals right from the outset. These resources were extracted and transported back to France, contributing to the economic growth of the colonial power while offering minimal benefits to the local population. This one-sided approach further reinforced the economic disparities between Burkina Faso and France, perpetuating a system where the wealth generated from the nation's resources primarily benefited the colonizers. France also took advantage of Burkina Faso's plentiful timber reserves and other natural resources, exploiting them for their own benefit. Timber was harvested and exported, contributing to the economic growth and industrial advancement of France. Unfortunately, this extraction of resources resulted in environmental degradation within Burkina Faso. Additionally, France heavily relied on the labor force in Burkina Faso for the extraction and processing of these natural resources. However, the workers faced harsh working conditions and received insufficient compensation, perpetuating economic exploitation and exacerbating poverty among the local population. Tragically, this cycle of resource and labor exploitation continues to persist in Burkina Faso to this day. It is important to understand that this situation is not a result of Burkina Faso itself, but rather the actions of foreign companies. These companies have prevented the development of Burkina Faso, leaving little room for job opportunities for the youth. Consequently, many young individuals are forced to work as laborers in mining sites, enduring horrific conditions. As mentioned earlier, only the masters have changed over time. Some argue that the colonial administration made investments in infrastructure projects like roads and railways. However, it should be noted that these endeavors primarily aimed at facilitating resource extraction and transportation to benefit the colonial power, rather than genuinely improving the overall well-being of the local people. During that period, the indigenous population faced significant discrimination. African children were prohibited from engaging in activities like riding bicycles or picking fruit from trees, which were considered privileges exclusively reserved for the children of colonists. Violations of these regulations could lead to the imprisonment of parents. On the 1st of March 1919, French Upper Volta was established as a separate entity from Upper Senegal in Niger due to concerns of recurring uprisings and economic considerations. Under the leadership of Governor Francois Charles Alexis Edward Hessling, the new colony embarked on an ambitious project to build roads and encouraged the cultivation of cotton for export. Unfortunately, the forced policy of growing cotton did not succeed, resulting in little progress in generating income. As a consequence, the colony was dissolved on September 5, 1932. Its territory was divided among the French colonies of Ivory Coast, French Sudan, and Niger. Ivory Coast received the largest portion, which included the majority of the population and the cities of Ouagadougou and Bobo du Lasso. On December 11, 1958, a significant moment occurred when the colony achieved self-government and became known as the Republic of Upper Volta, joining the Franco-African community. This change was made possible through the enactment of the Basic Law on July 23, 1956. Following this, the French Parliament approved reorganization measures in early 1957, granting greater autonomy to individual territories. Upper Volta eventually became an autonomous republic within the French community on December 11, 1958, and finally gained full independence from France in 1960. However, the exploitation of African countries was not limited to Burkina Faso alone. Even after decades of gaining independence, Africans continue to face exploitation. Although the colonial masters have changed, agreements have emerged, and European companies are now exploiting African resources with the consent of corrupt leaders. Unfortunately, the situation for the people of Africa has not improved. When one observes the current working conditions and ongoing exploitation in Africa, it becomes difficult to determine whether it is still a colony or not. Throughout history, Africans have risked their lives to extract valuable resources, often resorting to hazardous methods such as using mercury in small-scale mining operations. Yet, tragically, the fruits of their labor are seized by middlemen who acquire these resources at significantly lower prices. These intermediaries then sell the resources in Western markets, 
reaping substantial profits that primarily benefit Europe and America. Captain Ibrahim Traoré, for instance, expressed his concern about the difficult circumstances faced by many Africans engaged in dangerous gold mining operations. Regrettably, these individuals receive minimal compensation when they sell their produce in the African market. Consequently, the gold is exported to Western markets, generating significant profits for others while neglecting the needs of local communities. This ongoing cycle of exploitation and unequal distribution of resources perpetuates the hardships faced by African nations, highlighting the persistent challenges they encounter despite gaining independence. Endeavor Mining is a prominent mining company based in the UK that plays a dominant role in Burkina Faso's gold mining industry, controlling almost one-third of the country's gold market. In July 2020, Endeavor Mining acquired Monomine as part of its takeover of Samafo, a gold miner based in Canada. This transfer of African resources to foreign entities is not an uncommon occurrence. Previously, a Canadian company owned the mine and now is under the ownership of a UK-based firm. It is astonishing to note that Endeavour Mining holds a 90% share in the mine, while the Burkina Faso government only has a meager 10% stake, highlighting the prevailing foreign control. Despite being ranked as the world's 14th largest gold producer in 2022, Burkina Faso fails to benefit significantly from its own gold reserves. It is increasingly evident that the gold does not truly belong to the people. The majority of multinational companies exploiting these resources come from various countries outside Burkina Faso, while the government holds a minor share that can be easily acquired. It is ironic that foreign companies possess almost all the gold mines in Burkina Faso and receive full support from the government. This situation arises because previous corrupt leaders made long-term agreements for their personal gains. Furthermore, these foreign companies treat the gold mines in Burkina Faso as if they are their own property, even selling them to other companies. Throughout these developments, the youth working in the mines endure the worst conditions, witnessing only a change in their masters. Consequently, the people have minimal control over their own gold and are unable to benefit from their own resources. Recently, the government had to purchase 200 gold bars from Endeavor Mining instead of utilizing its own gold, essentially paying for the same gold that these companies extracted from mines in Burkina Faso. This ongoing scenario highlights the need for greater local control and fair distribution of resources, as the people of Burkina Faso continue to be disadvantaged while foreign entities profit from their own land. Before we continue, I'd like to remind you that I'm an AI language model and cannot perform actions like liking, sharing, or subscribing to videos. However, I'm here to help answer any questions you might have. Now, let's proceed. Burkina Faso's Ibrahim Traoré is determined to take a stand against the suppression and exploitation of his people by foreign companies in the 21st century. To address this issue, he has decided to establish a government-owned company responsible for overseeing all foreign companies operating in Burkina Faso. Under this new company, the previous agreements made with foreign companies will be reevaluated and renegotiated. Ibrahim Traoré understands that these agreements were unfair, as the foreign companies provided lucrative benefits to earlier leaders in exchange for mining permits. To rectify these imbalances, the foreign companies will be reminded of their place and informed that they are guests in Burkina Faso. Similar to other independent and powerful countries, taxes will be imposed on them. The years of exploitation must be addressed, and Captain Ibrahim Traoré is determined to reverse the situation. Previously, the people of Burkina Faso were perplexed as to why they remained impoverished despite being rich in natural resources. It is disheartening to discover that despite being the world's 14th largest gold producer, Burkina Faso continues to face economic challenges. The profits from their gold resources are owned by multinational corporations, benefiting countries like Canada and the UK. This becomes apparent when considering the minimal contributions these companies make towards corporate social responsibility efforts. However, Ibrahim Traoré has declared that such practices are no longer acceptable. But how will this transformation be realized? This is where Captain Ibrahim Traoré's master plan comes into play, 
He strongly criticizes the treatment of African countries, denouncing it as a form of brutal imperialism. Captain Ibrahim Traoré brought attention to the unfortunate reality that despite the formal abolition of slavery in Europe and the United States, Africans still face conditions akin to modern-day slavery due to foreign control over gold mines. He posed thought-provoking questions about the lives of miners, their families, and the exploitation they endure. He passionately denounced the injustice of their labor, emphasizing that regardless of the amount of gold they extract, the profits ultimately benefit European powers who hold the mining rights. This structural dominance by Europe has profoundly influenced Burkina Faso's gold mining sector. In a groundbreaking announcement, he unveiled plans for the establishment of a state-owned company that will assume control of all mining sites in Burkina Faso, particularly the gold mines. This bold move aims to bring about a radical change that will remove European companies from the equation. This transformative step will involve the nationalization of gold mines, leading to the offering of limited mining rights to foreign companies. However, these rights will only be granted if these companies pledge to develop Burkina Faso's mining industry, ensuring that the state-owned company becomes self-sufficient in mining operations. The impact of this state-owned company is truly remarkable. With Burkina Faso taking ownership of the newly established company, the gold extracted from the mines will remain within the country, benefiting its people. This modernization of the mining sector will replace harsh working conditions with a more contemporary approach, enabling individuals to extract gold in a manner similar to that in developed nations. It is important to note that in gold mines managed by European entities, a starkly different reality unfolds, where lives not only fail to progress but often worsen. However, with the introduction of the new company, Burkina Faso aims to create job opportunities for its youth. The efforts of these young individuals will now contribute to the prosperity of their nation and themselves, rather than benefiting foreign nations. Ibrahim disclosed that Burkina Faso is introducing the Africa Productivity and Economic Competitiveness Initiative APEC, an ambitious project designed to redefine businesses within the country. The motivation behind this initiative stems from Burkina Faso's possession of raw materials for a diverse range of products, despite its current reliance on imports for finished goods that could be manufactured domestically. Through APEC, Burkina Faso seeks to harness its resources, promote local industries, and enhance economic competitiveness within the global market. This strategic approach aims to uplift the nation by unlocking its potential, fostering sustainable development, and reducing dependence on external sources. In summary, Captain Ibrahim Traoré's vision encompasses the liberation of Burkina Faso's mining sector from foreign control, the empowerment of its people through job opportunities, and the pursuit of economic self-sufficiency through innovative initiatives like APEC. These endeavors hold the promise of reshaping the nation's future and ensuring that its resources truly benefit its citizens. During his powerful proclamation, Captain Ibrahim Traoré delivered a statement that resonated deeply with the audience. He emphasized that Burkina Faso's struggle is not an isolated one, but rather represents a collective fight for the entire African continent. In essence, the steps taken by Burkina Faso should serve as an inspiration for leaders of other African countries, encouraging them to break free from the grasp of former colonial powers and regain control over their resources. This is what the entire African continent needs, a united front against exploitation. Just as the waves of coups took European former colonizers by surprise, this move by Captain Ibrahim Traoré is set to shake the foundations of power dynamics. He has become the voice that makes African leaders realize the power they hold. If they choose, they can put an end to exploitation swiftly and effectively. This signifies that the imperial European powers seeking to undermine Burkina Faso will face a formidable challenge from the entire African continent. Their attempts to manipulate and employ unethical tactics to control a single country will prove futile when confronted with the united strength of the African continent. But can gold truly transform Burkina Faso? To answer that question, one must understand the vast amount of gold this nation possesses. Burkina Faso stands as Africa's fourth largest gold producer, alongside other valuable minerals such as cement, 
dolomite, granite, marble, phosphate rock, pumice, volcanic materials, and salt. Globally, Burkina Faso ranks as the 14th largest gold producer with an impressive production of 70,000 kilograms of gold in 2022. However, despite this significant output, none of the gold remains within the country and the payments received for it are far from equitable. Instead, all the gold extracted from Burkina Faso's mines is directed to European companies that exploit the nation's resources. This heartbreaking reality reveals that, regardless of the amount of gold Burkina Faso produces, none of it remains to benefit its own people. But that is set to change. Since 2006, numerous companies, including Gold Rush Resources, Griffin Minerals, Orbeez Gold Limited, Golden Rim Resources from Australia, and Claw Gold and Rand Gold Resources from the United Kingdom, have actively engaged in gold exploration in Burkina Faso. However, despite the abundance of measured and indicated gold reserves at every mining site in Burkina Faso, all the extracted gold is promptly exported out of the country, finding its way into the vaults of European banks. Expanding upon these key details, it becomes evident that Burkina Faso possesses immense untapped potential in terms of its natural resources. The vast reserves of gold and other minerals hold the promise of transforming the nation's economy and elevating the living standards of its people. Now with Captain Ibrahim Traoré's determination to reclaim control over Burkina Faso's resources, there is hope that the gold and other valuable minerals will finally benefit the nation and its citizens. This marks a significant turning point, where the wealth extracted from the land will be reinvested to foster growth, development, and prosperity within Burkina Faso itself. Unfortunately, the people and youth of Burkina Faso do not benefit from the gold mining industry as one might expect. Despite taking on significant risks to extract gold, the youth find themselves in a situation where the precious resource swiftly leaves their country for foreign markets. This situation has led to a dire consequence for the youth in Burkina Faso. Many children are forced to abandon their education and work in the gold mines, subjecting themselves to various dangers and hazards. It is disheartening to witness the exploitation of the nation's resources at the cost of its young population. Burkina Faso, despite its wealth of resources, including gold, continues to struggle with widespread poverty. Shockingly, over 40% of the population lives below the poverty line, according to the 2021 to 2022 Human Development Index report from the United Nations Development Program. This paints a grim picture of the economic reality faced by the people of Burkina Faso. The data related to poverty in Burkina Faso reveals fluctuations, suggesting that approximately 45% of households hover just above the poverty threshold. This means that even minor shifts in household incomes can significantly impact the number of individuals struggling with poverty. The precariousness of their situation highlights the vulnerability of the population. Burkina Faso falls victim to the so-called resource curse, a phenomenon where countries blessed with valuable natural resources, such as oil, minerals, or gold, paradoxically experience heightened poverty and sluggish economic growth. This unfortunate outcome arises from the exploitation of these resources by foreign corporations, further exacerbating the plight of the nation's people. However, there is hope on the horizon. Captain Ibrahim Traoré has identified the root cause behind the persistent poverty in Burkina Faso. He recognizes that foreign corporations involved in gold mining hold significant influence over the nation's economy, contributing to a cycle of reliance that stifles progress in other industries. With this realization, Captain Ibrahim Traoré is determined to break free from this cycle of dependency. His visionary leadership seeks to reclaim control over Burkina Faso's resources and ensure that the wealth generated from gold mining benefits the nation and its people. By challenging the status quo and implementing strategic changes, he aims to uplift the population and create opportunities for sustainable development in various sectors beyond mining. The road ahead may be challenging, but the determination to end the exploitation and poverty in Burkina Faso is unwavering.
Captain Ibrahim Traore's commitment to empowering the people and reshaping the nation's future is a beacon of hope in the fight against the resource curse and the quest for a brighter, more prosperous Burkina Faso. The heavy reliance on gold extraction in Burkina Faso hinders the country's ability to diversify its economy and invest in different sectors. Consequently, young individuals in Burkina Faso are drawn to the gold mining sector, perpetuating a cycle where the primary benefits flow to foreign entities. The dominance of foreign gold mining companies distorts the nation's economic priorities, leading to an excessive dependence on this single industry. With most of the country's resources and efforts concentrated on gold mining, other potential sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, and technology suffer from neglect and lack of development. This limited investment in alternative sectors reinforces Burkina Faso's reliance on the gold mining industry, trapping a significant portion of the population in a cycle of dependency. Unfortunately, this situation plays into the hands of foreign gold mining companies. The absence of viable alternatives creates a large pool of job seekers, enabling these companies to take advantage of cheap labor. However, what if Burkina Faso could take control of its own resources? Instead of relying on foreign companies for revenue, the country can harness the benefits of gold mining, create employment opportunities for its population, and ensure that the wealth generated remains within its borders. This is precisely the master plan envisioned by Ibrahim Traoré. By reclaiming control over its resources, Burkina Faso can break free from the cycle of reliance and establish a more sustainable and equitable economic system. This would involve prioritizing investments in sectors beyond gold mining, fostering job creation, and nurturing the growth of industries such as agriculture, manufacturing, and technology. Ibrahim Traoré's visionary plan aims to shift the power dynamics and empower Burkina Faso to chart its own economic course. By keeping the gold within the country and utilizing it for the benefit of its people, Burkina Faso can transform its economy, reduce poverty levels, and provide opportunities for its youth. However, implementing this plan would not be without its challenges. It would require strategic decision-making, strong governance, and international cooperation to navigate the complexities of the global economic landscape. Nonetheless, the potential benefits of such a shift are significant, promising a brighter future for Burkina Faso and its citizens. In conclusion, the current heavy reliance on gold mining in Burkina Faso restricts the country's economic diversification and perpetuates a cycle of dependency on foreign entities. Ibrahim Traoré's plan to regain control over Burkina Faso's resources and prioritize the nation's own development is a bold and promising vision. By breaking free from this cycle of reliance, Burkina Faso can unlock its full potential, create sustainable growth, and improve the lives of its people. While it is a complex endeavor, there is a possibility for Burkina Faso to reclaim control over all the gold mines within its borders. Ibrahim Traoré's plan seeks to empower the country and ensure that the benefits of gold mining stay within its boundaries. However, achieving this goal would require careful strategizing, strong leadership, and international cooperation. If Burkina Faso succeeds in regaining control over its gold mines, it could set a precedent for other African nations facing similar challenges. The success of Traoré's plan may inspire other African leaders to reassess their relationships with European companies that have been exploiting their resources for decades. This could potentially lead to a shift in power dynamics and a revaluation of resource extraction agreements. Also, while it is premature to predict the end of Europe's prosperous era solely based on the actions of Burkina Faso, Traoré's plan does highlight a growing awareness and desire among African nations to assert greater control over their resources. The exploitation of African resources by external entities has been a long-standing issue, and Traoré's vision represents a potential turning point. It is important to note that the complexities and interdependencies of the global economic system make any significant change a challenging task. The success of Burkina Faso's endeavor would depend on various factors, such as political will, economic stability, and international cooperation. Additionally, the response of European companies and governments to these efforts would also play a pivotal role in determining the outcome. 
Do you agree to the possibilities of Burkina Faso reclaiming control over the gold mines in its borders? Does Tolri's vision represent a potential? Turning point to you? Think about it and feel free to chat with us at the comment section. Meanwhile, as your number one source of the most valuable information from around Africa and the world, we are excited to announce to you that our next videos are coming from the exact angles you're seeking information from. So do not forget to subscribe to this channel and keep yourself always informed. This of course is Think Rich Africa. We think and serve all that you desire in the most exciting way.